Hi, Elisa. Um, let's try this again. Hopefully you can hear me this time. Um, what you wrote was what we call a content essay where you're talking about what the painting means. What I'm looking for is more of a what's called a formal analysis. So how the artist used the elements and principles of design to paint what they painted. That formal analysis is a great way to look at a painting and be able to judge it um, in one way. You can definitely get into the content, what it means, but formally, every painting can be looked at formally and you don't have to know a lot about the history of any painting. Okay, so all of this stuff is in chapters uh, three and four, I believe. So the elements of art, which I have over here, just listed out, um, line, shape, texture, space, color. There might be some more in your book. That's just what I'm gonna concentrate on now. And within those is line, actual line, and implied line. So implied line is a line that's not actually drawn. Shape, you have organic shapes, round, curvy shapes, and geometric shapes, more hard, rectilinear shapes. Texture is actual texture that you can feel. That's more on three-dimensional work. And implied texture. Implied texture is uh, something that looks soft, or it's a pattern, something like a polka dot pattern is implied texture. Space is the illusion of depth, and there's lots of ways to show depth in a painting. And here's a few of those ways. Placement, you're probably aware of. In kindergarten, you drew uh, your house and the, and the sunny sky, and the house was down low on the paper, and the sun was up high. So that shows depth. Overlapping, another way, you can see even in this painting, there's a lot of overlapping of characters and people. Um, that shows depth as well. Light source, uh, I'll get into this again, but uh, look at the light coming in from the right and the shadows that they create here. Okay, so that shows roundness or depth. And then there's linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. Linear perspective is um, how objects, in as they go back into distance, they get smaller and smaller. So Imagine standing on some train tracks and you see those tracks, they're quite wide where you're standing, but in way in the distance, they're quite narrow, they're small. That's linear perspective. Atmospheric perspective is um, looking out towards the Bay Area and you see the mountains and how they get more and more blue, more and more gray. Um, showing that is atmospheric perspective. Color schemes. Analogous are um, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. Reds, yellows, oranges. Uh, complementary are opposites on the color wheel. So orange and blue, yellow and violet, etc. Um, and then we'll get into the principles of design. Unity and variety. Unity is a... With the principle... Let me backtrack one second. With the principles of design, what they're doing here is using the elements to create the principles, okay? So they'll use line or shape, etc., to create unity and variety, okay? They'll use shape and space to create balance. Um, center of interest or focal point, that's where your eye goes. All of these elements will be used to direct your eye to this principle, center of interest. Um, and then rhythm and time, I'll get into those in a second. Excuse me. Um, okay, so those that's just kind of a review of those two chapters, just as it works for this painting. So let's get into the painting itself. So the first thing you wanna do is start picking out the elements. So line, where do you see actual line? Well, you can see actual line in you know, these dresses and the wood here, um, of the back of the canvas, the frames, 
those are actual lines. I think what's more interesting is the implied lines. They're the lines that aren't actually drawn. And what I mean by that are lines of sight. Who is looking at whom? So who is the princessa looking at? Who she is looking at her? She is looking at apparently us. These characters, you know, she is looking at us. He is looking at us. Who is he looking at? You know, those are ways to unite to connect the various figures in this painting. Those are implied lines. Okay, shape, organic or geometric. We see a lot of organic shapes. The human body is organic. We also see a lot of geometric shapes in the paintings, in the room itself, the back of the canvas here. Okay, space or the illusion of depth. Placement, okay, the dog is closest to us. This person back here in the doorway is farthest from us. Pretty simple, he's higher up on the picture. Overlapping, these characters are overlapped. That makes us feel like there's a space there. Light source, we have a light coming in from the right. Look at how it highlights the right side of their face here. And shadows over here, that gives a sense of roundness. Okay, again, that's depth, right? Linear perspective, look at these lines going down. You can't see this one over here, but it's going down. Things are getting smaller as they go back into the picture. That's linear perspective. Atmospheric perspective, not a huge one here, but there's details closer to us and less details farther away. That's a real simple way to think of atmospheric perspective. We can see details close, but the farther they get away, the less details we can see. Color, color schemes, analogous, complementary. You can kind of go in here and decide for yourself, like what family of colors are being used? What, you know, are they opposites? Are they similar? Are they warm and cool, etc.? And you can pick at that apart. Okay, so let's get to the principles of design. This is a real good stuff. Unity and variety. Unity and variety is really what's going to make a picture interesting. Unity is a repetition of an element. And that element can be line, shape, texture. Um, in this instance, let's look at shapes. What shape do you see repeated over and over and over again? I would guess it's the rectilinear, the rectangle, the square. You see that shape everywhere, right? So that unifies the entire picture, okay? Variety is a change. You know, how do you break that repetition? Because if it was all squares, it'd be really boring, right? So how do you break that repetition? Well, you can change the size of the shape that you're repeating, which he does, right? Big squares, small squares, medium squares. But you can also just completely change it and say, I'm going to throw in some organic shapes, the people, okay? That breaks things up too. That makes it more interesting to look at. Because um, you, what, what you don't want unless you're going for it, what you don't want is too much of one or the other. You don't want things to be too unified because that would be boring. And you don't want them too variety, you know, various variety because that would be too chaotic. It'd be too weird. Um, so you want a nice uh, visual balance of the two, which brings us to the principle of balance. Balance in this instance, in this meaning, means symmetrical or asymmetrical. What I mean by that is if you look at this entire painting and you cut it in half visually with what's painted on the canvas, is it equal on both sides? And if you cut it right down the middle, would you say there's more things on the right than on the left? I would probably say there's more things on the left than, or excuse me, more sides on my right than the left. That would make it an asymmetrical canvas. It's heavier on one side than the other. And you can definitely find examples of paintings, of sculptures that are symmetrical, right? The human body itself is symmetrical. If we took the princessa and uh, grossly cut her down the middle, like a horror picture, her left side and her right side would be exactly the same. That's symmetry. Um, some entire paintings are like that, where the left side and the right side, or the top and the bottom, are completely the same. Um, center of interest or focal point is really, really important. That's where the artist has tried to lead your eye, where he wants or she wants you to look. 
Um, this painting is interesting because there's more than one focal point. I didn't mean to trick you, but uh, just to make you think a little bit more with this one, because where does your eye go when you look at this painting? A lot of people look at the princessa, right? She's really lit up. I'll come back to that in a second. Some people look at Velasquez. Some people look at the man in the doorway. Some people look at the people in the mirror. Okay, so why? You always have to answer why is that? How did you get to that as your focal point? With the princess, I think it's because of the, and this is going back to the element, you always tie it back to the element. The princess may be a focal point because of the light source, the light shining on her. She's the brightest thing here. Velasquez could be the center of interest because he is prominent. He's very big. The big cross of Santiago, okay, that could be. The king and queen in the mirror image, they could be the center of interest. They're right in the center of the painting, more or less, right? Maybe we look right there. Maybe it's the strange man in the back. He's obscured, but he's lit from behind. It's very intriguing. Maybe that's our center of interest. Velasquez did this on purpose, as you know, but it's all stuff that you can write about in your essay. Um, rhythm, it's a lot like repetition. You could probably touch on that with, um, while well, you know these are all uh, repeated squares and rectangles, you could talk about the rhythm like, Rectangle, long rectangle, rectangle, long rectangle, rectangle, long rectangle, rectangle. You see that, that repetition. It's almost like a, a, a musical beat to it. So you could, you could touch on that. And time. Time is, is, is usually implied or suggested in a painting, right? We can't actually see time passing. It's not a movie. It's a painting. Um, but this is a moment in time. Or even in this instance, as some people have suggested, it's multiple moments in time all painted at one 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 spot so you know maybe velasquez is painting the king and queen but the princessa walks in and then later on this guy walks in so velasquez captures all of these different moments in time in one scene so that could be something that you talk about okay so the key takeaway here is you need to basically make a checklist of these elements find them like a scavenger hunt in the painting okay make a checklist of your principles of design and link the elements that you see to the principles that you know about and that then you just write that all out and that will really help you formally analyze any work of art and it seems kind of hard at first hopefully this this helped and if you just kind of practice it a little bit, it's really going to get easier. And it's such a great way to decide whether you like or dislike uh, painting from a how they painted it sort of level. There's always the content, right? There's always what they meant by what they're painting. But that can take a little bit extra work. But you could always decide whether you like or not like a painting just by what they did to do what they did. Um, with the elements and principles of design. I really hope this worked. I really hope this recorded. Um, if it didn't, we're going to have to get together and talk because I'm not doing this again. <laughs> All right. I really hope this helped. Please get in touch with me if uh, you have any questions or you don't understand what I'm saying or if I spoke too fast. And I will do anything I can to figure that out. All right. Have a good night. Bye-bye.